Hi, this is Jared Walton with Tom's Hardware, and today I am looking at Forza Horizon 5 running on the PC. So I'm just going to show the benchmarks of what's going on, what it looks like. There are six presets. The default that I'm starting with is the Extreme Quality preset. This is near maximum quality, and we're running on an RTX 3090 with a Core i9 9900K. We've also got 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3600CL16 memory, and we're using a two terabyte SSD. If you were to compare the image quality of this with the previous generation Forza, like it's hard to say what's really changed. The engine has been upgraded and updated in various ways, I'm sure. One of the big new additions is ray tracing, except the ray tracing is not in the main game right now. The only place you'll see it is in the Forza Vista garage, which is kind of a joke to me. Like, why even bother putting in ray tracing if you're not going to use it in the main game? Uh, otherwise, image quality looks good. All of those reflections are using screen space reflections and other calculations. And, you know, it's good enough to fake what you're seeing. But if you pay attention to the mirrors, it's obvious like the side mirrors on this Corvette they're not showing real reflections. They're just kind of flipping colors to, I mean, it's maybe they're doing one ray to see what it's, what color they should use. You know, like there's, there's some flickering of them to make it look like they're doing something, but they're not actually showing what's behind you or anything like that. So you can see almost 80 frames per second at extreme quality. Now we'll drop down to ultra quality. And I know you can't do like the easy side by side running this and it's running through YouTube so it's been compressed and such but the differences between extreme quality and ultra quality are going to be extremely small <laughs> and like really the only things that I've noticed is the motion blur seem to be maybe a bit stronger on ultra quality or lower quality I don't know I took some still shots and like there were minor differences where it just looked like the ultra quality mode had a bit more blurring on the ground, but everything else looked pretty much the same. And as you'll see when we get to the end of it, like the performance difference, it's it's about 10 to 15 percent, I think. And for most people, like the extreme quality mode is just going to be a placebo. It's not something you really need to use. One thing that's worth noting here is, and this is at 4K so you won't see it as much, but there is a bit of aliasing that's visible because there's no temporal anti-aliasing or SMAA or, or you know, any of those newer post-processing AA modes. Instead, we're using multi-sample anti-aliasing and by default, all of the presets except like low and very low, they use um, 2x MSAA, which leaves a bit of aliasing on some of the hard edges. You can increase that to 4x MSAA if you've got a fast enough GPU and, you know, the quality improves a bit. You can see there, so 80 frames per second up to 95 frames per second, so almost 20% faster by dropping from extreme quality to ultra quality. Third up, we've got high quality. And there are a few more visible differences, like there's not a whole lot of crowds on the side in this benchmark mode, but where there are crowds, there are like a couple less people and the textures have also been downgraded a notch. So like if you look through the Corvette's rear window, you'll see like the, the dashboard and such is visible. And if you compare the ultra and extreme quality to the high quality mode, you'll see that those dashboard panels are just a little bit blurrier or not as high resolution using the high quality preset. And that's kind of expected, you know, you downgrade the texture resolution, you downgrade shadows, you downgrade a bunch of things incrementally. It's not a huge change, but it does show up if you're really finicky and looking for it. But conversely, you know, performance also improves. And overall, like high quality mode is probably going to be pretty similar to what the Xbox Series X console runs. And you can see, you know, obviously we're running on a PC with an extreme GPU, so we're getting over 120 frames per second. But 
on a console, you know, the goal is to get 4K running at 60 frames per second. And so there you go, 123 frames per second. And now we shift to medium quality. And now's where, like, I, I believe, actually, I may have missed this high quality, I think may have dropped the quality on the SSAO. So, you know, some of the shadows in the corners aren't as pronounced or visible. Medium quality drops it again, so, you know, it's it's a little less realistic looking. But if you're just playing the game and you're just racing, this is a good performance compromise where you get even higher frame rates and the loss in visual fidelity isn't going to be all that noticeable. Reflection quality has also dropped, so like as you see the rear view, not rear view mirror, but the rear window, you'll see like the power lines and stuff scroll by on the on the window reflection sometimes. And if you go and compare those to the ultra quality, high quality and extreme quality, you'll see that there is a degradation in the quality of those reflections where they look a little bit more pixelated and aliased. Is that gonna really matter? Will it make the game better? Will it make you enjoy it more? I seriously doubt that. And I think, again, like if you're playing on the consoles, there's a, a quality mode versus a performance mode. I think performance mode goes for 60 frames per second, quality goes for 30 frames per second. So the performance mode is probably going to be closer to medium quality. Uh, and here we come up on the performance. So last was 123 for frames per second. This time we've gained less than 10% going from high to medium. So, you know, diminishing returns. We might also be starting to hit some CPU bottlenecks, so keep that in mind. The i9-9900K is still plenty fast, but it's definitely not the fastest CPU around. Medium quality. Again, everything drops a little bit lower. Uh, actually, no, this is low quality, sorry. So the quality drops a little bit more and your performance improves a little bit more. And on a card like a 3090, this is kind of silly because you've got horsepower to spare, but whatever. Reflections, shadows, um, lighting, all of that stuff gets knocked down a peg. We're at low, there's still a very low preset that we'll get to next. And that like turns off a whole lot of the extra features, including like the nighttime shadows and stuff look very different. Uh, not bad necessarily, just different. The crowds are basically gone on the low quality mode. There's no people standing on the sides watching and, you know, but if you're just focusing on racing and the cars and such, it still looks quite good. Aliasing, I think, is also MSAA is turned off at the low and very low settings. So if you look on the hard edges, you'll see a little bit more aliasing. And I'm testing or I'm showing these videos at 4K. Obviously, if you were gaming at 1080p, the anti-aliasing or lack thereof becomes far more noticeable. If you've got low-end hardware, you can also turn on Fidelity FX Super Resolution. It's just called upscaling in Forza Horizon 5, but it has the same presets. And that lowers the render resolution to boost frame rates, but it actually didn't help much. You'd be better off just manually lowering your render resolution, is my opinion. So now we're on the bare minimum, very low quality. And you know, this is this is as bad as the game looks, right? Everything's turned down to the minimum. The reflections on the window and such are largely absent. Like you'll notice the power lines almost don't show up at all. Uh, there's still something going on with reflections, so it's not totally turned off, but they're approximating it in a very simplistic, rough fashion. So lower resolution, lower level of detail, and things like that. Shadows also are mostly lacking, like the cars have a big blobby darkness below them, but there's like no other shadows around the buildings and stuff. And this mode is like, it's easy enough to run that even if you have integrated graphics, if you're running at like maybe 720p, I think Intel integrated graphics is still going to suffice to get the game running okay. I haven't tested that yet, but I will be doing so in the near future. And that's about it for the video. Hope you've enjoyed the 
image quality comparisons. Now you can kind of see what you are or are not missing. And the final result here at very low, we averaged 173 frames per second. Again, I'm pretty sure we're bumping into CPU bottlenecks. So thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.